a show as layered and complex as BoJack Horseman, you've got to look past the animal puns and dig deep to understand the past traumas of the characters, and how those things will affect them in future episodes. The show is steeped in foreshadowing, and some rabid viewers have analyzed the heck out of the series, and we've scoured the internet for these theories. From why Princess Carolyn can't have kids biologically, to Diane dying like a princess. I'm here to tell you all the Redditor conspiracies, show you the evidence, and decide if there's anything to these online musings. I'm Chris Carr, and here's your crash course in BoJack Horseman conspiracy theories. Princess Carolyn's infertility. Let's kick things off with a truly heartbreaking theory on Princess Carolyn's infertility brought to our attention by the Reddit user Tayne101. Like many BoJack fans, Princess Carolyn has a particular soft spot in my heart. I find her character and story to be so interesting, and I constantly want to see where she's at in her life. Look, this has been a lot of fun, but I need to start thinking about my future. I mean, you don't even respect me enough to have a baby with me. One thing Princess Carolyn has consistently craved and wanted is a stable family. In particular, a child that she can raise. She even wears a jeweled necklace passed down from her mother that she one day hopes to pass on to a daughter of her own. This necklace roots her, and when times get tough, she uses it to motivate her, giving her the faith to get the job done and know that she can have it all. When you wear this, I want you to remember that you've come from a long line of women who've taken our licks, but we always land on our feet. But in true tragic BoJack fashion, it turns out that PC is infertile and her necklace may be to blame. The necklace in question turns out to be a cheap piece of costume jewelry from the 1960s and is only gold-plated. See? No, it, it's very expensive. It's pretty, but basically worthless. And I'm only saying it's pretty to make you feel better. The theory is that this garbage necklace is a piece of lead that's been plated. According to the CDC, prolonged exposure to lead can lead to anemia and irritability, which I'm sure so many agents have just from the stress of their jobs. But they go on to say that lead can cross the placental barrier, meaning that pregnant women can expose their fetuses to lead, which can damage a developing nervous system. Lead exposure can cause miscarriages, stillbirths, and eventually infertility. So this is definitely plausible for Princess Carolyn. She has, after all, had multiple miscarriages. As Charles Lindbergh would say, sometimes you fly an airplane and sometimes you lose a baby. In this case, you didn't fly the airplane. Wait, what? So there's some actually sound scientific evidence to back this one up. Plausible and super depressing. Especially when you consider that the one thing Princess holds dear to her heart, the thing that represents her future family, is ironically the thing that might be preventing her from having one traditionally. Oh, look at that baby! Isn't he the cutest baby you ever saw? What? 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 No, no, what? <laughs> one big joke. This truly is my favorite theory, because it's just the sort of delightful and absurd thing the show could give us. This widespread and popular theory believes that this entire melancholic series is just the build-up to the world's most elaborate A Horse Walks Into a Bar joke, complete with a cut to black end series a la The Sopranos. Do you know The Sopranos? The show? Or that weird saxophone that Kenny G plays? Bojack did a play on this joke when first doing stand-up with Herb, and would greet the studio audiences of horsing around with a, wait a second, this isn't a bar. With all the bar scenes and booze packed into the show, I think making this classic joke an anti-joke could be a really poignant moment in Bojack. I'm fully anticipating him saying, wait a second, this isn't a bar while in rehab. Wait a minute, this isn't the bar. I gotta fire my assistant. Bojack also isn't shy about esoteric joke setups. The entire premise of the season two episode, After the Party, is built around telling what comedians like to call a brick joke. Most jokes have two parts, the setup and the payoff. But brick jokes add a third step in the middle, a false payoff that leaves audiences confused and, hopefully, questioning the competency of the joke teller's humor. Can I tell you a joke? Uh... Sure. Okay, so there's this gardener, right? Ugh, is this a joke about nature? Would you just listen? The flatter the original punchline, the better the joke. Usually the joke will be written off as a bad anti-joke. But like a boomerang, the joke will come back at the end of the comedian's set or episode, far after the original setup, to reveal the true punchline. This is the type of joke that rewards patience, and it's possible that the entire series could be following suit. And? Well, that's it. He throws it out the window. That's the punchline? That's kind of a thinker. I'll say. Makes me think you forgot the rest of the joke. Well, I'd like to think the series could end with him clean and sober, and this joke will be a light at the end of the tunnel. I don't think we can expect that from BoJack. I anticipate the next season showing the hardships of transitioning to a sober lifestyle, only for the writers to pull a fire sale on all of BoJack's growth, backsliding into his same horrible old behavior, and ending up completely broken. Which is when he'll do what he's known to do walk into a bar, at which point the bartender will turn to him and ask, why the long face, then cut to black. And we'll laugh, 
knowing that it's long, not because he's a horseman, but because Bojack is a serial narcissist and alcoholic that pushes everyone in his life away. And then we'll probably drown ourselves in a glass of whiskey and existential dread. What? Oh! Wow, that is actually a really good joke. I told you, some things take time. Bojack will kill himself. The most obvious theory is that Bojack will kill himself, with many assuming substance abuse will lead to an accidental overdose a la Sarah Lynn, or in a drunken stupor, he'll take his own life. What seems to have the strongest evidence, however, is that Bojack will choose to drown. If the studio wants to sue me, tell them to take my house. I belong to the sea now. Are you drunk? Only on adventure. Engine. Drowning has notoriously been a metaphor for depression, and there's a ton of water and drowning imagery in the series. We first experienced this at the end of the show's opening sequence, when Bojack sinks to the bottom of the pool, reaching out to Diane. Bojack's portrait of an artist portrait features a horse treading water, and treading water is brought up again in the season one episode, Downer Ending, when Bojack, while on a bender, is tripping and thinks to end his book with him swimming with no intention of going back to land. And when I get too old to take care of myself, I go for one last swim. I know I can't make it back to shore, I'm too weak, too tired, so I just let the water take me under. Later in the episode, Bojack watches himself tread water, like in that painting. Shouldn't we help him? No, he loves treading water. This is all obviously happening in Bojack's drugged out brain, but I feel like this is incredibly important to who Bojack is. Treading water keeps you from drowning, but you aren't getting yourself out of the water. That's Bojack in a nutshell, working to not drown. We see Bojack actually not fight to save himself from drowning in the season three episode, It's You. Much like the title sequence, Bojack moves through a party until he ends up driving his car into his pool. As he plummets to the bottom, he notices all the air bubbles around him. This is a callback to a story from earlier in the episode that Anna Spanakopita tells him. When I opened my mouth, the air bubbles floated up and that's how I knew which way to swim. That is a terrifying story. Instead of following the bubbles up to save himself, Bojack just submits to the depths. Mr. Peanut Butter, of course, saves Bojack, but it really felt to me that this was Bojack hoping it was the end. If you want to read a fantastic list of other potential drowning illusions, I highly recommend you check out the carefully curated document from Redditor Ava Hershix. Okay, I probably butchered that name and I'm truly sorry, but they've done a magnificent job of supporting this theory and really made me think on this one. There are some people you can't save, cause those people will thrash and struggle and try to take you down with them. What does it have to do with me? While there's apparently a slew of evidence for Bojack killing himself, specifically by drowning, I really hope the writers don't go this route. They've done an excellent job crafting stories on mental illness that so many people have connected with, with many viewers feeling a strong connection to Bojack's character. And while we have a recurring theme of the show of things never getting better, we do see glimmers of hope in Bojack's life, and he gets small victories. And that's such an interesting thing to explore. Perhaps water can be used as a different, but also a popular metaphor. Bojack can be reborn in a way, and have his sins, or his vices and demons in this case, washed clean away. Or at least tidied up a bit. People don't change because they want to change. They change because they have to change. Oh God, boo! Oh, bullying is generally frowned upon. Sarah Lynn was abused by her stepfather. We're continuing down this deep conspiracy rabbit hole with another fan theory that, while definitely plausible, is incredibly upsetting. This theory is that Sarah Lynn's destructive behavior is the result of a history of abuse at the hands of her stepfather, or paws in this case. As we know, Sarah Lynn can decipher whose fur belongs to a bear by taste. Her explanation, her stepdad was a bear. There's a bunch of fur in here. It's bear fur. I can tell, my stepdad was a bear. So that has all kinds of uncomfortable implications. Furthermore, we're told that Sarah Lynn was homeschooled by her stepfather bear, who was also a photographer. Many believe this pedo bear character is modeled after photographer Terry Richardson, a fashion photographer with a stack of sexual allegations against him. Do you have any friends your own age from school? No, my mom's boyfriend homeschools me. He's a photographer. This Richardson connection is reinforced, not only by the photography line, which makes Sarah Lynn look away uncomfortably, but by the design of the bear we see accepting an Oscar on Sarah Lynn's behalf. This acceptance speech also concludes with the bear asking Sarah Lynn to come home. And if you're watching this, Sarah Lynn, Wherever you are, please come home. The bear appearing on the screen seems to trigger Sarah Lynn as she talks about how she hates everything about herself. Now for those who are going to fixate on how Sarah Lynn said, was my stepdad, I believe Sarah Lynn's mother simply divorced him at some point. I feel like this evidence succinctly explains a lot of Sarah Lynn's life choices and addictions. Hey Sarah Lynn, you want a party? Oh, thank God. Yes. <laughs> Hollyhock's namesake. 
Need a breather from all the truly depressing theories? Me too. It's too much, man. So let's pivot towards how Hollyhock's name is steeped in Hollywood history. My name is Hollyhock Mannheim Mannheim Guerrero Robinson Zilberschlag Sung Fonzarelli McQuack. Wait, 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 wait. What's your first name? Hollyhock. Redditor Jake the Snake did some digging on the name and believes Hollyhock was chosen very deliberately. Here in Los Angeles, there's a Hollyhock house, which was built in the early 1900s for Aileen Barnsdall, an oil heiress who dabbled in experimental theater, by famed architect Frank Lloyd Wright. The space was supposed to be a hub for the progressive theatrical community. Aileen would have a daughter out of wedlock who was nicknamed Sugar Top, which is pretty dang close to Sugarman, Henrietta's maiden name. Aileen would go on to grow interested in politics, feminism, and help design the Hollywood Bowl, where Todd played the triangle. <laughs> While this could be a coincidence, I'm with Jake the Snake. This seems like an interesting choice to give some real world parameters to our characters, and we've been some LA history. Well, I do know a guy, but he's somewhat south of Pico, if you know what I mean. I don't. Why do Los Angeles people think everyone else understands your local references? Diane will die like Princess Diana. Next, we have a theory on how Diane will die much like Princess Diana did back in 1997. In season five, episode seven, Diane is portrayed as Princess Diana in a story told by her therapist to her wife. Furthermore, at the end of season five, we see Diane driving through a tunnel and isn't seen coming out. I feel like this is one we can debunk. It seems a little on the nose for the writers to kill off Diane with the Princess Di scenario after the direct comparison. Go forth with the tools I've given you. Live your life, Diana, like a candle in the wind. I'd say this is going to be Diane's drowning metaphor. The going down a long tunnel with no end in sight as she tries to help Bojack navigate her own life after divorcing Peanut Butter and consequently continuing to sleep with him, her therapist dumping her. She has a lot of things spiraling out of control and it probably feels like there's absolutely no end in sight for her. Sorry I broke every piece of furniture you own. Will $20 cover it? Don't worry about it, but yes. So what happens now? I don't know. That seems more likely to me than her crashing and dying. But you let me know why I should be on board with this one. Now that you've been given the details on these Reddit conspiracies, do you think there's any validity to them? I know I'll be rewatching the series with these in the back of my mind. Let me know your thoughts and theories down below. Want more? Click to the left of my face or check us out on Roku and Flex. Thanks for watching, y'all. See you, Space Cowboy.